Hi everyone, welcome back to my genealogy channel. I'm John Beaumont and today we're diving back into the world of artificial intelligence and how it works with genealogy. Now I've made some AI videos already but not one from the very beginning. So in this video I wanted to come to cover the basics of AI, especially generative AI and ChatGPT for those who want to start from the very beginning. So first we'll break down some basic AI concepts and terms you've probably heard floating around. Then I'll show you how to interact with generative AI, specifically ChatGPT. And trust me, it's simpler than you think. It sounds incredibly powerful for genealogists, and it is. So what is AI? Imagine AI is a giant umbrella covering various technologies. It's not a specific thing. It's very much like describing information technology. So there's lots of different types of AI and lots of different ways that AI works. AI systems can improve or sustain themselves basically without human intervention. So they are designed to think and learn like us. So for simplicity, I'm going to split AI into two main groups. Specific AI, which is often called narrow or weak AI, is the type of AI that's built for one task like GPS or translation, speech recognition or weather forecasting. Now, this is very specific and very, very typically accurate. So have you ever wondered how your GPS calculates the fastest route? It's juggling positioning, mapping, traffic data, traffic flow, and that's what AI is doing. It's not needing to be programmed with every different change. Now the other type of AI is generative AI. Now this is where things get really exciting. Generative AI creates new content, whether it's text, images, chatbots, charts, many, many things. It's called generative AI because it generates new things through what feels like a human conversation. And this is the AI you're hearing about in the news. You probably don't hear about GPS and the weather about being the AI, but this is the AI that's really taking things by storm. Now there's many generative AI tools around, but things like Bing, Copilot, and Google Gemini. If you've been using either Bing or Google now, you'll see they've integrated AI to them, uh, not really successfully, in my opinion, uh, because they're trying to do two different things. But today we're going to focus on ChatGPT because that basically is just generative AI, and it's a lot more flexible, I believe, than Copilot and Gemini, but they all do the basic things. So let's dive right in and look at an example of ChatGPT. To access ChatGPT, let's go to chat.openai.com. You don't need an account, but signing up gives you much more flexibility. Plus, it's free. Now, you can upgrade for advanced features for $20 a month. And now, creating an account is simple. Let's look at the screen. You can use either your email, Google, or Facebook credentials. So moving along to the ChatGPT screen, and as we can see here, it's very, very simple. I'll go over the features. Now this screen will look exactly the same whether you have a free account, whether you're just using it as a guest, or whether you have a paid account. Some of the nuances will be slightly different, but basically it looks exactly the same. So let's look up here at the top left hand corner. There's a sidebar that's available that tells me all the previous conversations going back all the way past 30 days. So I can bring up any of those conversations at any time. Here is some of the specialist GPTs that I'm using. Now, a specialist GPT, think about it as a preloaded conversation. And I'll be exploring GPTs uh, that we can use in another video. I won't go into it now, but it's they're basically preloaded conversations that where you don't need to worry about how you're going to create the prompt. Here is the new chat icon. So anytime I need to start a new conversation or end the one I have, I can go to this new chat here. This will give me the versions of GPT I'm using. Now I'm using the paid version, the advanced features. So if you've got the free account or guest account, it looks slightly differently. Now, as I said earlier, if you're using a free account, you do get a lot of features. Those features can be throttled back if there's a lot of people using ChatGPT at that particular time. Over here is, is a, one of the advanced features I've downloaded from a GPT uh, functionality to allow me to save my conversations of PDFs. Um, again, I'll, I'll go into this a little bit later on. You won't see this on your screen. And down here is the most important part. This is the prompt. 
and this is where we send messages. So we need to think of, of chat GPT as really texting somebody else. I'm not having asking like Bing or Google to do a search, I'm having a conversation. So in your mind, you've got to think about we're texting backwards and forwards almost in a human-like way to somebody else who's going to help me with this conversation. And the more detailed the conversation, the more iterations you like, the more powerful the results are. So we'll see some of those things going on. This is where I, this paper clip is where I can attach images or files. And here is a very important warning that ChatGPT can and does make mistakes. It's been taught in the large language model. In other words, it's, it's been learned a lot of language background from a lot of information and text, but that doesn't mean say the, either the information is correct or it's complete. So again, it's up to a human now to make sure that the the output is correct. So we, it's never a finished feature when you're working with ChatGPT. So this is the basics. We're looking at how to log on and how to use it. I'll just give you some example conversations here that I've already written. Um, this is uh, research planning. So uh, help me create a research plan for immigrants arriving in New York in the 1850s. So a pretty typical research plan we'd need. It goes through the steps, the different key steps that you uh, need to do all the way, all right, the eight steps. And also gives me a nice research log template. So it's a very broad uh, subject, help me research immigration. Now I can start detailing this down. Uh, maybe help me name some ships. And so now we're looking at the immigrants coming into New York. What, what were the names of the ships? So I have 18 or so, 15 ships here. That it's now. So I've gone broadly at immigration and I'm narrowing it down to the ships. And now I can say, tell me more about SS Persia, which is a Cunard steam, steamship known for its speed and service. And now I get some more information about that. So I can, as you can see, this is a conversation I've gone from very broad to very detailed. I'm now even looking at when that ship was built. Now this is where I'm asking you to always double check. This is probably correct, but without you double checking some of these details, you don't know for sure. Here's another broad based conversation. I have reached a brick wall in researching my great grandfather's birth, helping with a strategy. So now it's walking through the different kind of strategy. So if you Google this, you would get uh, Google pages or points or web pages where you get the information. This is actually generating actually the research strategy that you would need. And it's always pretty good. These things are always pretty good. So again, we've gone broad. Let's start narrowing this down. Please recommend some internet resources for North Carolina. And now it's looking at the particular resources for North Carolina, if my uh, brick wall was in North Carolina. So it, some very, very good online resources there that we can go and go and look at. So, and I could ask about a particular place in North Carolina and I could keep moving forward with that. So this conversation now is there for me to go back to if I need to. And then let's look at a little, something a little bit more specific even. So tell me about common occupations in Chester County, Pennsylvania. And it goes through mining, obviously, um, and milling, and actually misses out steel, which is quite surprising. Agriculture, milling, manufacturing industry, maybe that includes the steel there, railroad transportation. It's very, it, it's very good, but again, I know from doing research in that area that steel was pretty, pretty strong in that area. So uh, I can ask about who were the prominent citizens um, and it gives me Chester County's DuPont, obviously, Carnegie, and we can go through some of the prominent citizens there. And I can move over to Phoenixville, which is a, a town in, or a city in, in Chester County, and look at the prominent citizens there. And let's uh, ask it a question, because I know the steel's missing. What was steel an important industry? Oh. I can't spell this it. in Chester County. So, yeah. so yes, it's going to go through now about the Phoenixville Steel Company, which I knew was existing. So again, this points to the fact that the, although this is very, very, very good, 
you need to have a little bit of knowledge and you need to back up the information that you get from ChatGPT. I asked it there about Chester County. It didn't give me steel, but I did some independent research to know that steel was pretty important. So this is the basics. I'm not going into any more detail about this. We, we've learned about specific AI, where we're looking at weather mapping GPS, where it's very specific, doesn't typically make mistakes. It's aimed at one thing. Then we're looking at generative AI or general, or if you like AI, where it can do a lot of different things, but not perfectly. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're going to be able to use ChatGBT or one of the other AI systems within your genealogical research or any other research. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll still be making more videos about ChatGPT and how to use it in genealogy in the future. Meantime, please like this video. It will help me make more videos that everybody likes. And I really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Have a great day and, and good luck with all your research.